Hey, my Married at First Sight Nashville fans, it's our turn once again, and we have a new episode to talk about. So our newlyweds are celebrating their one-month anniversaries. There's one couple that smashes some things up, and then another set of questions at the dinner party have one couple questioning whether they're even on the same page. Welcome back to Romance Review TV. It's Lady T. Got another recap for you guys. Married at First Sight. Nashville, Season 16, Episode 11, Moonshine and Month Anniversaries. And without any further ado, let's talk about this episode. So oh, let's just jump right into this and talk about Chris and Nicole. So Nicole's dad come to pay the two of them a, a visit at their new apartment. And in an effort to make sure that he has his father-in-law's approval, he pulls him aside for a chat. Now, Chris has great things to say about his wife and his marriage, but has to be reminded that they are still in the honeymoon phase. Now, Nicole's father also want to make sure Chris still has a voice and clearly her dad knows better than anyone how his daughter may not always be a walk in a park to deal with. Then as we move on later in the episode, Chris surprises Nicole with the helicopter ride for their one month anniversary. He really wants to do something special for his wife to show appreciation for her. He is just too sweet. Now, Chris continues to impress all of us. It seems like he's such a nice, genuine person. And I really hope that he and Nicole continue on this positive trajectory. The one thing that continues to worry Chris, however, Ever, is that she can be overly critical of herself. And I know, I mean, a lot of us kind of express some skepticism, but I know we all truly hope that they can continue to grow together. So next up is Eris and Jasmine. Now, Eris meet with one of his friends to get some advice on his marriage, and his friend is shocked to learn that he is not attracted to Jasmine and they haven't consummated their marriage. And I know a lot of people had a problem with Eris, especially in social media. My thing is, I would rather for him to be honest and says, hey, you know, I don't want to just sleep with her just because to make her feel how she wants to feel. He's being straight up with her. He's not attracted. And at the same time, he don't want to misuse the situation. I can't knock him for that. And I know a lot of people have a problem with why can he be attracted to her. Well, the situation is, is that people are attracted to what they're attracted to. And unfortunately, we see this every season across many different shows where there's somebody that is not attracted to somebody. And of course, it gets everybody up in arms. But I mean, for someone that who was very, very uh, frequent when it comes to sex, he is actually choosing to withhold and maintain discipline until he build that connection. So I just can't fault him for that. Now, later when they go out for their one month anniversary, uh, he reflect on what's necessary for their relationship to grow. We can't forget about that smash rage date that they had. And she definitely had to let out some of her frustrations. However, at their anniversary little dinner outdoors, he had a conversation where he notices that they have better conversations when they're on dates and wants to start figuring out what they have in common. Now, I think that's a good sign. I mean, he has only complained to everyone who listened. So at least he's trying to be productive and they both agree to work on their intimacy and to refrain from sex until after decision day. Now, Eris doesn't want to give his wife mixed signals, which I agree with that. So he believes not having sex is in their both best interest. And again, I agree with that. They need to decide if they actually like each other before they progress things any further. So next up is Clint and Gina. Now for their one month anniversary, Clint and Gina go for a hike and a swim. Now they both have a great time exploring and enjoying each other's company. And even in Gina's post interview, she confessed that she could actually see a future with her husband, Clint. Now she's beginning to see why the experts actually matched them. And of course, that was the quickest 360 in Married at First Sight history. They went from being at each other's throats to actually getting along really well together. Now, I don't know if that's going to be enough, but things are definitely looking up for the two of them. And, you know, 
I'm pretty curious in seeing how things go as they continue down the road in their marriage. Not sure how much all of this is worth it, but at least, the very least, they look very comfortable together at this point. So last but definitely not least, Shaquille and Kirsten. Now, Kirsten is still struggling to open up to Shaq. Now, although she claims her attraction has grown, she's still out on the same level as he is. Now, for their one-month anniversary, they enjoy roller skating and have a cute little quiet dinner. During the conversation, Kirsten talked a lot about their future. And, I mean, I was shocked because her actions, I wasn't sure that she even wanted of the future with Shaq. Even though Shaq notices the difference in her words and actions, he doesn't see her letting a guard down anymore than when they first met. And even in a post interview, Kirsten tells the producers that she feels Shaq is too concerned with decision day. She questions why she would even feel comfortable with him and allow him around her friends and family if he doesn't make her feel like things are long term. Okay, I can understand that, you know, as a person person who maybe doesn't open up easily but one thing is is that the type of person that you have to explain your thought process to and ask what you want you got to give that same thing back now Shaq may be open to giving her what she needs if she just communicates it well speaking of communication it gets real sticky at the group dinner party when we hear nicole ask the two of them the status of what's going on in their relationship and some of the answers that kirsten was given was confusing shocking and looked like kind of blindsided shaquille so much so that it was a topic of discussion once they returned home i was a little stressed out at the table but what was it that I said that made you feel like it's a setback in our marriage? How's the intimacy level, the chemistry level? It's like, I just feel like it's really little. Has anything progressed in the intimacy department? Are we hitting any new bases? Um, not really. I'm like, what in the hell? How do you feel about our marriage right now? I definitely feel like we need to work on communication. Like, this is horrible right now and I really feel like the intimacy level could be better I honestly think that he has communicated exactly everything that he's looking for over the previous episodes I don't think that she's interested she's just not verbalizing that because she's trying to get through the show to the end that's just my opinion I'm not on set I don't know what goes on with these two however I will say in the after party look like there is an expert that is really rooting for them by sending them relationship tips up underneath their door Cole would literally slip notes up under our doors uh, and say, hey, this is what you need to do, or just walk in our apartment. That would be Nicole, but... Wait, this really happened? Yes. Okay, Nicole slips notes under your door, giving you relationship advice? Yes. Please describe a note. Hey, before you go to bed, make sure you kiss Kirsten and whatever the case may be. So then, clearly, Kirsten's having these conversations. Conversations, but just not with me. Obviously, Nicole is rooting for these two, and I actually think they could be a great couple, but Kirsten will absolutely have to let her guard down. And if she's truly not interested in Shaquille, she needs to verbalize that and let him know. Okay, so let's get the conversation started down in the comment section. Do you think that there is still hope for Kirsten and Shaq? Is Eris just biding his time until decision day? And who do you think out of these four that's left are actually going to stay married? My bet is on Chris and Nicole. So I hope you enjoyed this recap. Stay tuned for other recaps and updates on this channel. And until the next video, like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you next time. Bye.